What's up everybody? So if you're like me, you are probably a fan of multiple different settings across the different genres out there, right? You know, 40K probably doesn't encompass your only setting of enjoyment in the science fiction, science fiction, fantasy crossover setting. Uh, you probably have others as well. And with that, and when you get to thinking, you get to talking to other like-minded people about comparing stuff from the settings. The settings themselves, individual factions, or whatever the case might be, even tech sometimes, or whatever the case is. And of course, you can't do a real true blue comparison where you really break it down with any real meaningful data because different settings, different laws of physics and their fictional settings and so on, it tends to be the case. But invariably, it happens. And that's what this ramble is going to be about. Uh, it's going to be comparing a faction from 40K to a faction from another setting that's very near and dear to me that I'm a big fan of, the StarCraft universe that setting. Both are fantastic settings and both have factions that are pretty easy to compare to. Now StarCraft has the big three and 40k has like a bajillion factions. So, um, but you can compare every faction from StarCraft to something in 40k just like you could compare everything to something in uh, Star Wars or something else. But anyways, uh, for this one I'm not going to do kind of the quintessential go-to comparison. That would be Tyranids and Zerg, which is very much a class I want to talk about, and fun too as well. But I want to do one a little bit different. I want to talk about the Eldar and the Protoss. I think of all of the 40k factions to compare them to, the Protoss are best compared to the Eldar, although you could make a case from one or two other factions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down kind of the similarities and go over them. I'm not going to really, you know, drop any real learning knowledge, if you will, out there because, uh, way too much to cover in that regard so if you're a little lost because you don't know one of these two factions uh apologies in advance but that's just the nature of the beast um with that said i'm gonna go over them like basically real quick bullet point kind of setup about the two that's very similar discuss the similarities some more go over how even with their similarities the details of what makes them similar actually helps make them different outside of the obvious physical different traits that they have and then at the end of the day the question always comes up which one do you like better which one do you prefer stuff like that i'll be going over that towards the end so eldar and protoss both ancient races in their settings right the eldar created by the old ones and the protoss created by the zelnaga uh eldar very ancient had an empire protoss very ancient had an empire uh one of the big protest factions is referred to by other protests as the firstborn and refers to themselves as the firstborn at times as well. So that kind of gives you a, a, an idea of how they consider themselves truly ancient and um, entities, if you will. So they both have that going for them as similarities. They both are naturally attuned, capable users of their settings magic system, right? With 40k, that's psychers and warp manipulation. And with StarCraft, it's psionics. And psionics. And then maybe maybe void energy as well and other stuff. But basically, psionics is their magic. And warp psychers is 40k's magic. And these two factions, these two races, are naturally attuned and capable with the magic of their setting. Right? So they got that in um, comparison as well. Both also have very advanced technology and capability of traversing around and just doing things. Um, not literally the same type of tech, but both very advanced technologically. Uh, you could say that the Protars are the most advanced outside of the Zelnaga stuff themselves, uh, any of their relics. Outside of that, you could say the Protars are the, continually, are the most advanced continually um, progressing technological base in StarCraft. And you can say the Eldar are up there with really advanced technology. They're not the most. Well, that would go to the Necrons. But anyway, <clears throat> so they got that going for them. Um, both maintain very dedicated systems in terms of combat and outside of combat and, and very well trained. Both are races that are in the current timeline of the setting of their respective settings are kind of on the decline you could say the eldar population is very small they're always on the decline um the protoss population is not a very prolific one uh which isn't the best way to say that but um they are also kind of on the decline as a race their, their numbers 
look to be dwindling. Not that they're going extinct in either case, but just that they're no longer on the rise like other uh, races might be in their respective settings. So quite a lot of similarities when you do the bullet point setup, right? Um, with that being the case, however, it doesn't mean they're the same thing with different visuals, which they are. The Eldar are quite literally elves in space. You gotta keep in mind, in the very early days of Warhammer 40k, it was basically Warhammer Fantasy in space. And the Eldar are, are one of the few holdouts still of that, and they are basically the elves of 40k. Nothing wrong with that. It's in their aesthetics, it's in the way they do things, and their culture a bit as well. And it works. It works. Uh, the Protoss definitely are not that for StarCraft. The Protoss are a bipedal species, yes, but they don't walk like Eldar walk or like we walk. They walk with limbs that are basically digitigrade, I think is how it's pronounced. It's digitigrade, I think is it, or digitigrade or something like that. Basically, it's the same way in which cats and, and the like walk, where um, their legs are positioned in a certain way that... Um, it, it's I think like we put our, our foot flat on the ground and when it's digitigrade I believe they walk on their toes more so than the flat of their feet they hardly ever if, or if ever touch the flat of their feet to the ground uh, outside of like doing a weird sitting thing or whatever it's it's odd you don't typically see it in a in a in a big tall sentient species like this in in a, in a setting you do you might but it's not the most go-to way to do things so there's a big difference there the Protoss have no orifices except for their eyes, you could say, if one can consider that an orifice. Um, they have a semi-permeable skin covered in scales, and uh, they absorb basically their essence, needing stuff, their uh, essentials, their, their um, I, I don't want to say food because they subsist off of light and water and oxygen, but they absorb all that through their skin. And they're, they don't really have a digestive tract necessarily because all any waste is kind of dealt with it on the molecular level and broken down that way. So very kind of weird advanced out there species um, for sure. Both are incredibly long lived, right? This The Protoss, I think, can live for about up to around 2,000 years maybe. Uh, we don't really get a, a definitive uh Typically, 1500, 1300 is where we, we see a lot of Protoss meeting their end, usually in battle or whatever. <laughs> but um, uh, my point is that they, they, they're they definitely a longer-lived species. Eldar, of course, are very long-lived species of, of, of beings themselves. So all this is great when it comes to specializations. And by the way, as you probably could tell by the title of this video, it's a long-winded thought ramble. So we already went over a big difference, right? Their physical appearance. One is a typical bipedal elf, just like a human in that regard. And one has degraded limbs for locomotion, the, 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 the uh, legs, uh, has four fingers uh, instead of five, uh, has no mouth, has no ears, but uh, they are sonically gifted and that basically is how they do everything. That's how they communicate, that's how they they, they see, and then, and then their other senses, a sense of smell, which they do through their skin also, and uh, hearing or whatever is all done uh, it's, uh, just by their being. So quite a difference physically right there. The other difference is, of course, a byproduct of their settings. They both don't use the warp. Both aren't psionics. One's a psionic thing, which is very just open-ended for doing a bunch of stuff and channeled in, in aggressive ways or defensive ways and in and, and that regard used for communication. And the other is warp magic, basically, right? So the difference is there is that because you don't channel from a, a malicious area of, of um, the universe, the warp in the case of 40k, because you don't do that in StarCraft, you are kind of free to pursue your sonic gifts and, and uh, enhance them and strengthen them and make them grow and kind of um, uh, really just master it and become one with it and push the limits of it. That's very much what they do in the Star Trek universe with their sonic capabilities. Uh, that's why we have things like the Zealots and the High Templar and everything else and all that in, in, their, in their culture. 
you don't get to do that as much in 40k with the warp you can still dabble with it practice it learn your craft but because you're they're always at risk for warp possession or being just consumed from within by malicious entities or or um becoming a gateway and especially with the eldar being slime ash's preferred soul of choice and to nom nom um you have to tread very carefully and while they are a psychically gifted species it's not necessary that every single one is making use of it were in the form of the protoss with their psionics because it's a much more benevolent system right it's not a malicious intelligent and uh, area of of space if you will or or ultimate reality trying to kill you at all times they can be more free up as a species to generate their sign capabilities so there's a difference there technologically they do things differently but it also seems to be along the same lines um by that what i mean is outside of the typical just cannons and and other and missiles and the like of which both have some type of just energy weapons or or um some type of missile or some type of like cannon type of weapon right um their tech also enhances their abilities uh different type of crystals for the protoss embedded in their armor and the like um a different you know the use of different gems and protective soul gems and the like for eldar in case they fall in battle both sides of this coin here both of these factions really believe in the in the um, preservation of their species to the utmost degree with the eldar the Monkai and everything else they'll if they can use them they can broker deals with them or if they can just kind of coerce them to be in the right place at the right time for the eldar to deal with the brunt basically for example the whole reason the, the orcs invaded armageddon like they did is because the eldar kind of um divert them to that planet instead of them getting crossed up with a craft world um so with that being said you have uh the elder doing whatever it takes to make sure that they if they have to engage it's always had the best terms for them and they always have things kind of getting in the way of their opponents uh deliberately or by accident and just you know kind of twisting the strands of fate as best they can to preserve their species with the protoss they're a bit more martially proud and and were a bit more stuck up in, in that regard i mean both are stuck up species for sure but the protoss kind of learned to go beyond that um well they will do the dirty work themselves but they believe in highly trained warriors equipped as best they can be to to avoid death uh, they believe each protoss warrior is an army of one to be preserved at all costs and they even have special warp stone generation stuff that embedded in their armor that um upon their defeat but before their demise they are whisked away teleported away to a a, a place where they can be retrieved and healed or if the two injured they can be uh placed inside a dragoon or an immortal so they both sides go about it in different ways but the end result is trying to preserve the species right and their race should be preserved above all and to that regard that we have yet another similarity before i start breaking down some of the more nuanced little stuff in there um the eldar do it way more so but they both have essentially um world ship type stuff now with starcraft the scaling is smaller the ship the arc ship the spear of a dune is only like 76 kilometers long i say only but that's really long um <laughs> where with the eldar they're actual they're called craft worlds for a reason but they're artificial constructs basically massive arc ships you could say the, the whole idea is to preserve the species and can, let them continue and grow amongst the stars as vagabonds if you will as nomads uh, and not just meet the fate of extinction on a planet there were three of these for the protoss which only have one functioning now the other two were destroyed but the concept is still there right we have a, all the different eldar factions that are, that are not exodite or dark eldar are a craft world so there's way more uh craft worlds than there were arc ship capable but still 
the concept is a similar one, being self-sustaining, fully capable of providing nourishment for the people within, uh, arming them for war, defending them, propagating their species, and so on. It was all meant to do that um, uh, aboard that ship without needing pretty much anything else. And the Quarif Rolls fulfilled that purpose as well. So both have that. And lastly, I guess now, because I, I almost forgot about it, each faction has a dark twisted version of themselves. The Eldar have the Dark Eldar and the Protoss have the Taldarim. The Dark Templar are not necessarily that. The Dark Templar are different kind of nomadic, almost a bit more in touch with the tribal nature that the Protoss identify themselves as different tribes. Uh, but anyways, the Taldarim Protoss are incredibly wicked and cruel and savage. They're not, you know, debased or anything like that. They're not Dark Eldar. But my point is both factions have a twisted version of themselves. The Eldar have the um, Dark Eldar. And the Protoss, the Dalam, if you will, have the Taldarim. So... With that all being said, I've kind of covered the similarities and differences more or less at the same time because while there are similarities, you can see as you dig, like if I just said they're both the, you know, um, uh, the, the spell naturally attuned kind of spell casters for their, their settings magic, it sounds pretty similar, but once you go into the nuances of how it's different, you get, you get a feel of that. Um, I know if I said they're both, um, on the decline and therefore preserve their warriors you would there's different ways in which they do that i didn't really cover the eldar way which is the soul gems to preserve the, if the warrior dies their their soul is put in a soul gem to protect them from slanesh and then they might be able to inhabit wraith guard or wraith or style constructs and basically possess them with their soul gem and, and fight as if it was their body a completely different way of doing it than the protoss which try to keep the warrior from dying period um and I have even covered the idea of the Purifier AI program, which basically copies a Protoss hero's mind as if it was that Protoss hero, but it's a synthetic AI mind. Anyways, similarities abound. The difference is in the, is in the details of how these similarities actually are implemented in their respective settings. Um, of course, one's based off of a strategy game, one's a miniature war game, yada, yada, yada. So, without breaking down further nuances of their species, any interesting points worthy of note? Well, much like their settings are, these factions are a nice representation of their settings. What I mean by that is, and the Eldar aren't the only faction like this in 40k, but 40k is not necessarily a real setting for growth and development and uh, evolution, if you will, right? Um, the the Imperium definitely doesn't do that. They're more technologically stagnant. It's more, it's more of a stagnant setting with a few factions that are trying to make real headway in the tower, that gleaming hope of progress in 40k because they're constantly trying to make their stuff better. The Necrons aren't necessarily a hope of progress. The Necrons are the most technologically advanced and they do progress their tech, you could say, but the tech is so advanced it looks like magic. So I mean, they're 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 at the, the top of the game when it comes to technology. But by and large, in 40k, it's a bit more of a stagnant universe where where progression with something is very slow and hard to come by. Where Starcraft setting is more of a case of becoming better than what you were, learning, adapting, surviving, and evolving. Right. So with the Eldar. The only thing that they took away from their fall as a species, you know, birthing for Slanesh, is that they got a bit too debased with debauchery and a bit too gluttonous with their uh, gifts and relied on it too much. But they still believe their race is the race to preserve and that everything else can just be used as a tool for their survival. Um, and so they'll do things to, to garner favors or uh, proceed you know, to win the trust of stuff so they can better exploit it. But at the end of the day, the Eldar are only out for themselves, right? It's a, it's a galaxy only of war in 40k after all. 
The Protoss started off with very similar thoughts. They had a caste system. They had they were ruled by the Judicator caste. They had ancient laws and decrees that must be followed, or the punishment could be death, right? And they did not. They viewed all the other races as the lesser races, not not to interfere with unless it's going to impact their own survival. And as we saw in the beginnings of StarCraft One, they will wipe out whole worlds of the Terrans, humans, because of the Zerg presence there. It wasn't, hey, we're going to wipe out the Zerg and that's it. It was, we're going to destroy this entire planet because there's the Zerg. And all those billions of people, they're lesser races. Anyway, they don't matter. And they went from that to the Protoss trying to unite all different factions together underneath the, thing, underneath, um, the entity known as the Delam, uh, which is their kind of new ruling council concept. Um, now I can get into the Kala and how they broke away from the Kala, but that evolution, um, actually working with the lesser races, if you will, and coming to not view them as lesser, in fact, forging true bonds of brotherhood and friendship with some Terran characters, Gasp, right? So um, we see how the Protoss kind of change their outlook and evolve and try and, and, uh, and progress. And with the Eldar, we don't really see that. But it's not just the Eldar, right? We see we also see that in Imperium, we see that in Chaos, we see that everywhere, right? Tyrannians just want to eat everything, they don't even count. Um, Starcraft, Terrans, and Zerg, we see the same thing. We see holdouts of the old ways in Starcraft, but those are holdout considered fanatical factions. Which is funny because if the way of the of progression and being progressive in the Starcraft universe would be the fanatical stuff in 40k. So just some food for thought there. So Long way to getting longer. End result, which faction do I prefer? Well, I think they're both cool, and they both have interesting points worthy of merit. All right, I love the idea of the Phoenix Lords and the Aspect Warriors and War Spiders being my favorite, and the Fire um, Fire Dragons being cool too, and everything else. Um, Farseers and Warlocks are very cool. The Artoks, an interesting concept, right? The Craft Worlds are really neat. I really like that, um, and pretty much did it first but anyways uh so the elder are very cool the protoss the high templar are awesome i love the idea of them being able to merge into an archon sacrificing two individual identities become this ball of destruction basically for the greater good of their species uh their technology is great i love psionics as a concept and how open-ended that word can be for doing a bunch of different stuff in different settings right not just in starcraft so um I love the Purifier AI program. I think the idea of the... I like how they evolved the Protoss. So you have the Templar, the Dark Templar, which is, you know, the Templar and the Nerezim, uh, together as the Dalam, alongside Taldarim, alongside the Purifier. Really cool stuff there as well. Um, but for me, the faction I prefer of the two is the Protoss. I think the Protoss are just the better faction for me to be a fan of, right? If there was a StarCraft miniature war game this channel may just stop before they get all together and that's how much i would be down for it obviously i wouldn't do that too much stuff invested in models and just stop but i would definitely pick up it pick it up in a heartbeat and i know why i would paint specific terran things because I, I really enjoy the human factions and most everything i know i would definitely be all for collecting protoss without a doubt no doubt in my mind i probably have a protoss and a terran force um but I have no real inkling to want to collect the Eldar. They're cool. I would do a very Wraith Guard heavy concept, but I just have no real drive like I would for the Protoss. I'm not saying the Protoss are better because then all the Eldar fans get annoyed. I'm not saying the Eldar are better because then all the Protoss fans might get annoyed either. For me, I prefer Protoss. I think for me, they are the better faction for me. Um, I find them more interesting and... Um, I like the whole kind of roller coaster ride of their progression we get to see in the lore of StarCraft. So that's my take. I prefer the Protoss. Both are really cool. I went over kind of similarities and differences. Very basic, right? I'm sure comments get written mid video. So what I'm saying here, you know, uh, might be a bit too late for a comment or two, but I'm not trying to break things down super specific. I'm sure if you take what I say and really dissect it, you can go, well, actually, the Templar are like this. What the hell? 
I get that. It's just the basic concepts, kind of appetizer style, right? This isn't meant to be the entree. This is just meant to wet your whistle, get your appetite going for thinking like this. So uh, on the basic sense, the protars are more or less like I was talking about, and the LR are more or less like what I was saying on a very basic sense. And, and you can see both very really ancient races, both uh, naturally gifted spell casters of, the, of their settings, magic, if you will. Um, both are a dwindling race, both are advanced technologically, and, and so on down the line. So they have quite a, quite a nice list of similarities, and when you get into the details, you see just how different they are despite their similarities. Anyways, what are your thoughts? Share them in the comment section below. Thanks very much for tuning in, and until next time, take it easy.